I started training in the basketball world back in 1999, and my vision was to be the best trainer in the world. Boardroom. I'm Roz Goldon Wood, and today we are here with Lakers assistant coach Phil Handy coming to us live from the NBA bubble in Orlando. What's up, Phil? What's up, Roz? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm glad to see your smiling face. I'm happy you made it safely and healthily into the bubble. Uh, yeah. We're here. We, yeah. are here. we are here in beautiful Orlando. It's overcast today, but we we here. We'll definitely get to the bubble talk, but first I want to just cover a bit of your journey um, to this point. And your resume certainly speaks for itself. I mean, you have worked with, um, just to name a few, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie Irving, there's many more. You've been to five straight NBA finals. You're hoping maybe, you know, now that you're in the bubble for your sixth straight. You've won two NBA championships, one with the Cavs in 16, last year with the Raptors. Um, you played ball. You then went on to be a, a trainer. And uh, I read about the, the amount of miles you would drive in your car all over the country to work with all different levels of hoopers. And then finally, to make that transition into the NBA, player development coach, then assistant coach, and now in your latest role with the Lakers as an assistant coach at the front of the bench. Um, very few trainers see this kind of ascension, Phil. I, I'd, I'd like to start with, what was the breaking point, the breakthrough point for you to make that transition from trainer to NBA? Um, man, Roz, I just think, I don't really know if I had a breakthrough. I just think that my journey has been, uh, it's been one where I've actually just enjoyed every step of the way. You know, I, a lot of people have asked me how I got to this point in my career. And even you talked about those days with me in my car, where I was like, I, I valued those days. They were, they were part of who I was. So it wasn't like I was in my car, like, man, I want to be doing something else. I was present in every part of my journey. So I think during those days when I was in my car, I think you were at Stanford. And Stanford was one of the places that I used to drive to, to train some of the players at Stanford. And it just, um, that part of my journey, is, is a piece that I look back on and I say, I really wouldn't be here without that because it really taught me a lot about some work ethic. It taught me about being passionate about it. You know, I, I would drive 500 miles in a day sometimes. So I think what happened, Roz, I, I went through that for 13 years uh, running my business. And I got to a point where I was just like, my name had grown in the training industry and I wanted to be kind of recognized as one of the best trainers in the game. And I had an opportunity to work with a lot of great players, but I hadn't worked with a player such as Kobe Bryant. And when the opportunity came, uh, when Mike Brown offered me a job with the Lakers, that was really the selling point. That was the tipping point for me was to, well, if you're, if you want to be on that track and you want to be, recognized as one of the best trainers in the game, then you have to work with some of the best players to ever play. And that was really like the challenge for me. I think that was really the next step or the next phase of my career. You know, I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but having the opportunity to work and develop a relationship with Kobe was really the, uh, that was the thing that kind of pushed me over the edge because I had, you know, before that I had some previous opportunities to get on the NBA staff, but you know, I was really happy with my business. I was, I was happy with being able to work when I want to work, take time off when I don't want to work. And um, that was really the, the driving force to that. You know, Cole was, <laughs> you know, he was really the, the thing that kind of pushed me to say, this is a new challenge for you. And, and can you, you know, work with players like that and help them and, and also uh, have an understanding of, of what it is to, to work with elite players at that level. So that was the thing that kind of really pushed me into the NBA. Yeah, you, you mentioned Mike Brown giving you that call to come join his staff on the Lakers. That was your first run in with the Lakers and first NBA job. I think it was like 2011. I think 2011. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, there are different 
there are different roles as an assistant coach or being on a coaching staff. Can you be specific with me about what the difference is between the role of player development coach versus being an assistant coach on the bench? And maybe even give us some examples of like what you're trying to do to try and support Frank Vogel, for instance, in a Lakers game as an assistant coach. The main role was to make sure guys are working. And I think there is a, a misconception around the NBA that de development coaches are not coaches and that we don't coach the game and that we, that we, we don't do the same. No, our responsibilities are different. You know, we're not required to, to have, you know, breakdowns of the offense or the defense, but we are required to understand, you know, the team concepts and to understand the flow of the offense, understand how it works. So, you know, that was my lane. And as I moved out of that, you know, I went to Cleveland and I became the director of player development, which, which gave me some other guys to work underneath me. And then I became an assistant coach, which allowed me to start doing scouts. It allowed me to start doing uh, game prep. You know, T. Lou gave me a lot of responsibility, but at the same time, I still held a lot of responsibility in the development. And, you know, now here with the Lakers, you know, that, is, that again, continue to grow. Frank has given me uh, a large responsibility role. So, you know, I still do a lot of the development. I still work on the offense. I still work on the defense. I still do scouts. I do all of these different things. And then really just, I think as an assistant coach, your responsibility is to be a soldier for the head coach. You know, whatever Frank needs me to do, we got to carry out those orders. And, and I really try to keep it in that. When he gives me different responsibilities, I try to tackle those things. I try not to, to move into other coaches' lanes. You know, I want to keep, keep my focus on what coach uh, gives me to do. And I try to, I try to carry out those responsibilities to the fullest. And then on top of that is, you know, our responsibility is to also shoot him with, with ideas day in and day out, different things about offense, different things about defense, different things about our opponent, um, things about our team. And at the end of the day, you know, Frank is to collect all that information and figure out what he feels is best for the team going forward. But we are to, to flood him with different thoughts and ideas. And, his, you know, that's our job as an assistant coach, to give thoughts, to give ideas. And at the end of the day, you know, Frank will take what he wants and leave, leave what he doesn't want. But my growth as a coach has, um, has definitely been a steady climb uh, from development into really getting into the X's and O's of the game. And, and I think that's, that's been a, a real natural progression for me. I mean, I know you're going to keep it humble, but a lot of people toot your horn as one of the greats at what you do. In fact, I just saw on Twitter for, uh, recently, Kendrick Perkins called you the best player development coach in the league. He put that on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and it's something, you know, I'm in NBA circles. It's something echoed over and over again. You can also see that in your ascension and also how those top players, you know, rock with you like that. And that has a lot to do with the drills and the workouts you're doing, but it also has to do with rapport and your ability to understand guys. I remember you were telling me about, getting to build a relationship with Kobe and Kobe tested you and he kind of came, he kind of came at you. You had to prove yourself. I want to know now, what about Kawhi and LeBron? What were they like to build a relationship with? Man, you know, both two different guys. Um, LeBron is obviously, man, he is who he is. Roz. I mean, his career, when I got to meet with LeBron, I was in 2000 and, 14, I believe. Uh, I went to Cleveland in 2013. I was there for a year without him. And then he came back to Cleveland. And I didn't know LeBron at all. Um, never met him. Never had any dialogue with him. Just, you know, played against him. And so, LeBron is a man. He's a, he's a first-class worker. I mean, he just – he loves to work. He loves challenging himself. And LeBron was pretty straightforward with me. You know, the first day that we got to the gym and he got back to Cleveland, we sat down and we, we had a conversation. I asked him, you know, just what he wanted to improve on, some areas that he wanted to get better at. And for me, I've always felt like with players like that, Roz, it's about collaborating. It's, I mean, because as a coach, I learned so much from them. You know, just as much as we impart knowledge, they impart knowledge on us. And I've always been been very aware of understanding what players like that need and figuring out how I can help them. And it's really all about listening. So 
you know, Bron just say, hey, look, coach, I'm, I'm very efficient. I like to be efficient with my work. I don't like to waste time. I like to get my work in. I like to get off the floor. And uh, he was always about, look, I want to improve my ball hand. I want to improve my footwork. I want to, you know, I want to improve on every area of the game, my post up. So that was the first conversation that we had. And then I think it was just really all about just building trust on the floor. It's not about building a relationship or building a friendship. It's about building trust through the work. And I found that that's what's made me uh, have some success with a lot of players is that it's all about the work, first and foremost. And I think that moves into other.